Yo, what's up, homies? This is Boy Lotel bringing his brand video, and today we're back with some more of the, of the letter. Now, if you guys remember what happened last episode, I'm gonna hit the journal so we can pull this up. Last episode, we were playing as Isabella, and we were on October 24th. So, Isabella, I ended up seeing her old roommate died, Rose. Now, we went to the offices afterwards to find out if we could find out any information about the situation, and we also didn't believe it, ha it was real. So we went to the office hoping that maybe we would see her here or something. The offices were closed. Everything was off and when we walked in, we thought maybe we'd be okay. We heard the printer running running, and when we went over to the printer, everything that was printing out had the, uh, on the page saying, help me. HELP ME! No, okay. Anyways, help me and uh, it was written in blood but you know, red ink because it was come off the printer. and. Immediately after that, we heard a familiar sound. It was the girl from the mansion, the haunted mansion from the very beginning of the game. If you watched the series for a while, you understand that now. Anyways, we ran into her there and our character Isabella ended up having to hide underneath a desk, which I believe is stupid that she didn't try running away because she saw her hide underneath the desk. She saw me see her see her hide underneath the desk. So I don't need, I think I, the ghost is an idiot or it was all a ploy. Anyways. Isabella, we don't know if she's alive or dead now. Now we're playing a brand new character. Well, not brand new. We're playing a new character, Hannah. We met Hannah with Isabella and Rose back, way back. And they are the ones who actually ended up purchasing the mansion that this haunted girl is from. Anyways, that's all I really have to say. I'm not going to go over her whole profile. If you want to read it, there you go. Um, I'm not going to read it just because I, I think most of this I know already. It gives you more detail anyways. But alright, we're gonna go ahead and end it out here. Oh, <gasps> you guys see it? Look at that. Help the help me pages I was talking about. Alright, anyways, let's continue. I don't know why the relationship. Oh yeah, now we're playing as Hannah, so it's showing the new relationship status. And where we are right here with Isabella, we they just went to the house and now they're seeing it getting bought. And we see Isabella when she was freaking out for the first time. What's been bugging my mind, however, is that Isabella. What is her problem? I still don't quite understand what is happening. One moment she's scrambling to give us the paperwork to finalize the sale. Then she's panicking over some sort of prank letter or, or another. Is Isabella alright? Oh, that's right. She never ever called me by my goddamn name. Call me Isabel. My name's Isabella. At least call me Bella. Mother. I'm over here pissed off for another character I'm not even playing as anymore. <laughs> It is apparent with uh, with the way she shakes by the and by the uh, pallor, paler, uh, pa pallor of her skin. Something has really shaken her up. Do you need me to call that ambulance? Her accent is heavy. I am worried, but it will but it will be best if she is attended to by someone more familiar to her, like her partner. But even then, the girl refuses. Rose offered drinks, offered drink, and looks just about ready to make a run no. for it. I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me, I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. And she does so, just as I predicted, and her partner followed like a concerned mother. There's an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of whatever that was. The others murmur and gossip with each other, speaking of the poor daft girl telling the tale to whoever was not a not audience to act in the first place. It doesn't take too long for the woman Rose to return and pull us aside into the sturdy for what I rightly assume is damage control. Yes. Rose invites Marianne into, hoping to apologize to her as well. But the woman refuses, saying she is not one of her clients anyway. That leaves myself, Rose, and Luke, the last of all too eager to make himself comfortable in a study he's not he's no doubt already claimed as his I own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. She's young and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. And it must be this terrible heat too. Not a drop of rain for days now. Are you sure it is wise to just let her go like that? Where is the poor dear? She might get hurt. She's more likely Thank you for being concerned. Else, given what just happened. Hey. Hey. I will smack you. I told her to sit down and take a break. I might be your well actually. Too. Hell, I am your wife. That's the shit. I'll do that without a problem. That might be for the best, dear. 
But please, we're here to talk about the mansion, yes? Why, I absolutely adore it! Don't you, Luke? Some of the rooms will certainly have to be repurposed. We want to change the appliances and have Marianne lead on the decor, but the whole thing is just lovely. I guess. It's certainly a lot roomier than our penthouse. I mean, it's a mansion. The fuck did you expect? Exactly. Lots of space for guests. Balconies. Mind blown. A lot of room for little ones to run around too. Okay, okay. If you wanted a place just for you to have kids, why don't you just get a house? You, you, what the fuck you need a mansion for? The fuck? Th uh, we need space for little ones to run around. Let's get a mansion. Totally fits the bill. Totally. Definitely not overkill. Let's not discuss that right now, Buttercup. Rose is like, ah, <laughs> I'm not here. Anyway, I do think it would be a shame to let this mansion slip past us. Yes, it's a chance. But you haven't even finished touring the house. Well, we like what we've seen. See the rest of the house. I'm making her job easier for her, am I not? Yes and no. No need for loans or long price negotiations. We could just sign a contract and close the deal. Really, you think the woman would be more happy about an easy sale? I mean, in some ways, but I mean, it also is my job to show you the house. Plus, I'd rather you see the whole house and then make that statement before, I mean, after. So later on, if you get to know the rest of the house and then not like the rest of the house so much that it makes you not want to buy the place, then you take back your money. I know how these estate agents worked, how long they had to wait, and how much they had to spend even just for a single sale. Why, she should be jumping the jaw by now. I'm sure the commission on this mansion is nothing to sneeze at, even if she has to split it with the Isabella girl. Do you think we could have horses here? I mean, it's a, it's a fucking mansion again. Yes, those do sound nice, love. Look at her face, she looks like she gives no shits right now. She's just, yes, okay, yes, shut the fuck up. Anyway. If anyone else is interested in buying this <laughs> Why property, she have no, I assure you no emotion when talking to the husband. She all pissed. She's all pissed when her husband talks, but when, when, when Rose talks, she has, or talking to Rose, she has a smile. I... A vineyard would be nice. Or maybe a... Hey, look, shut up. Talking about adding we stuff. we do reward our people quite generously, Rose. So, if I were you, I would start on that paperwork. Helicopter pad. Hey, Luke, chill. Ch smack him. Give him a good old smack. He's way too focused on adding shit to the house. All it's gonna do is cost more money. And why the fuck do you need a helicopter? Why? I pause. And there's a small moment of complete silence when Rose and I just stare in incredulously at Luke. It is an unspoken understanding, a rule between the two of us that we have to put on an act. Without social standing where image matters, it is also important to avoid making enemies. And to follow this rule is an easy feat for me. From youth, I have been a well-trained social butterfly, gracious and graceful. I mean, if you're a social butterfly, that's one way to do it. I mean, if you're a stoic person, you just you just look at them and you just try not to look like you're pissed. You just you just look at them. You don't give them too much of an eye. You just uh huh, sure, okay. Look on the other hand. Look, no, what? Whatever would we need a helipad for? Exactly! Well, he likes to play fool sometimes, even if he is, even if he is anything but. As he throws me a weary smile, I shake my head and beckon Rose over. This is to be our home and there is nothing she or anyone else can do to change my mind. This is a place that, see, that speaks of power and importance and at the same time of safety and comfort. I would rather not speak of power. I don't, I don't want my house to be that way in all honesty. Perhaps we can have even not have our family here. This is definitely no better. Uh, this is definitely no better gift than this for our special deed. Why everything here is absolutely wonderful. Well, except for this ugly painting in the study. Oh, dude, dude, that's set nicely, nicely. So this is the first time she sees the girl. Looks like a bad fake of Ed. <laughs> Of Edward Munch panting. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. Jesus! If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another 5%. Jesus! I doubt anyone can, of course. Damn. Mr. Jesus! This could well, You know what? 
Just add 15% to the listing price and we can sign all the paperwork now. Again, Jesus! This girl crazy! Well, I guess, if that's what you want. Let me just spend all of my money. Any trouble. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. Yeah, I get that. I have copies sent to you so you can look over them. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, you're more than welcome to. No, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate a private tour of the place a lot more, I think. All right. Should I let Marianne in, then? Marianne? All right, she's been waiting outside the study this whole time, hasn't she? I'll need to have a little chat with her to move this little mansion project Please forward. Do. There's a look of apprehension when the other woman enters the study. Yet, like a professional, I see the moment when she steals herself and makes her worry. We Admirable! This project, then? Of course! Will you be needing anything from us? Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Yep, so she gets an idea for what you guys want uh, with this house. Is meeting really all that necessary, Marianne? I need to figure out what the fuck you want to do. There's so many different ways I can take the house. We could go steampunk, we can go classic, we can go all over the goddamn place. 1970s classic, there's a difference, you know. I guess we can send Johans to help you out. You two can start by getting rid of this ugly painting. Can you stop flashing it on the screen? Like with the music? That was good though. That was good. I ain't gonna lie. You guys got me. You, you sent a jolt down my back. A hush falls upon the room at my request. And lo and behold, the painting is gone. In its place, a mirror stands, which leads me to look at my own confused Odd. expression. Well, no matter. Back to the topic at hand. Marianne, dear. We are simply far too busy to meet up. So that was well done. That was well done. That's some grudge level shit. Where you decide because of like it being like the grudge. I was wondering too because I didn't see the picture in the background. But that was well done. So like the grudge almost where the grudge flashes in on any object. She sort of seems to be following the same logic. So like even if you were like to be passing by on like uh, you're riding like a bus for example. And you see the reflection in the bus you would see her instead of you. That's a legit scene, by the way. Hopefully I didn't spoil that. Like, that's a legit cut, like, oh my god, holy shit. Ah, 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 where the fuck's a save? Up oh, right there. Save, boy. All right, we're gonna free up my schedule. I think it's best to free up a schedule because this, this, that's how but you do this. I guess we can free up a day to meet with you. Yeah, Mary Ann's gonna like that because it makes sense. It makes her job easier. It's It'd be a lot worse for you to be like, Oh no, you can do it. Because then if she does something she likes, you might not like it. But I, I don't really need another maudlin Monday reading about Maury anyway. The book club Maury. can function without me for one day. What time shall we be seeing each other? How does lunch sound? Besides, my house has a higher priority over the book club. Why, we can hold the next meeting in this place. Oh my god. Surely, the beauty, the grandeur of all it will inspire spirited and lively debates about whether modern day writers could match up to the classics. I might as well clear up the rest of my week to handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. I mean, you should expect that anyways. Any social activity can be put off until the Armored Guard, or rather the Wrights Mansion, great debut. I have my fill of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Although, with a project at this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. Yeah, because it's going to be you're going to be talking about every single room. You need a theme, a color palette, you need your style. Like, and then it's interior design. We're just talking colors. The whole interior design is everything. A more down to inspection of the place is also preferable. Down to the tiles on the floor, all the way up to a poster being on the fucking wall over there, and the bookshelves. More... Breakfast, then. I forget they do the voices, so I didn't need to. It's early, not. Oh, is she nervous. All right, Monday. These sweet arms, heavy mom, spaghetti. Sorry. We'll see you then. Actually, Marianne suggested that we meet at nine, but who is it even awake at that? Oh no! <laughs> I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to the cardinal. God damn it. We said our goodbyes, shake hands, and make it clear without without outright saying it that we now own this house. 
By the time we leave the mansion ground, sunset is almost set upon us. So, you really want to buy this place then? What is up with your face? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. I like how you guys impulsively buy. Let me impulsively buy a mansion. Don't worry about it, it happens all the time. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. That's a devilish look you're giving me there, bud. I feel elation when I hear those words from him. It's not every day one is able to please someone like Luke. He gives away false flattery to sway those who starve for his attention and approval. Don't know why I'm doing this accent, but I shall continue. But in the privacy of closed doors, he would often express his grievances here, and neither censored himself in front of me nor spared me from his criticism. You have been saying the penthouse was getting a bit too small for you. Happy anniversary! Oh. That time of the year already. He forgot about the last year too. I understand he's a busy man, but smack him. Is that why you want to buy it? Yes. You don't like it? I do. But I remember you used to talk about how you wanted to live next to the beach. Aw, sounds like he's actually concerned about her. Botany Bay, Kent. Oh, she's very specific. She's like, Bay. It's this very specific bay. But hey, at least he tried. I mean, if, if he got it, if he got it exact, I'd actually be amazed. He doesn't seem like not many guys seem like the type. But damn. I remember the sea water, the sea water they, that scratched on for miles and miles as far as the eye could see. As a kid, I loved our beach trips, swimming all day as much as I could. I was a well-behaved child, and the only time I was ever, was ever truly difficult. The only time I was ever truly difficult was when I refused to get out of the waters, even when my fingers had gone all wrinkly, and even when they managed to pull me out of the water, there was always sandcastles. The day before we get before we married, I told Luke that I wanted a house on the beach and a dog, and a kid or two. None of those came true seven years later. That was a childish dream. Living next to the beach is so impractical if you really think about it. I mean, you gotta deal with hurricanes, that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's not a bad thought to see you in a bathing suit every day. Maybe another time, love. Hey, they could, they could actually have moments. Look at that. We still have forever, don't we? He says nothing, only grabbing my hand and holding it tight as we spend the rest of the ride home in silence. I miss the sea. Sick and hovering over the uh, over the, the loom, the loo, at 3 in the morning, the picture I paint right now is hardly glamorous. A horribly fish taste is left in my mouth as I, mouth as I throw up what I had for dinner and I, and I hate the acrid stench that fills the laboratory. The burning sensation in the back of my throat is of no help whatsoever. I can feel another wave of nausea come up for me when the door opens. Hannah, what are you doing so early out of bed? I'm fine, love. I must have just eaten something bad. That's all I managed to say before vomiting again into the port into the porcelain throne. Lovely. Just go back to bed, Luke. I'm going to clean up here. I refuse to look at him. I don't want him to see me like this. Last time I've had a horrible morning retching into a toilet was during my college years being the life of the party. Thoughtless, thoughtless and shameless, I had thrown away months to frivi the frivolous mermit and pointless hookups. I didn't even retain any of the connections I had made from that time. Sure, they, they know of me, and I still know of them, and we, we still do business from time to time, but I've lost touch with anyone who I didn't see on a daily basis. I hardly have any friends I had when I was still Hannah Evans, teachers, fellow university students, drinking buddies, and old conquests like Jack. No, don't touch me, sweetie. It's disgusting. It's actually sweet, think about it. I'm disgusting. Aw. Luke sits down next to me on the toilet floor to hold my hair, even as I as I cough up more fish. He wipes the vomit from the corner of my mouth and just Do stares. Do I need to fire someone? I don't feel sick. Damn. Just feeling a bit under the weather, dear. It's been unbearably hot as of late, hasn't it? I do wish it would rain. Are you sure it wasn't those sweets? <laughs> I told you not to eat those sweets. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would do around the same jokes. Well, don't laugh. Well, <laughs> I can't help if you make that sort of face. I mean, hell, you could probably tell what it is. Just keep looking. <laughs> he starts struggling, and soon enough, he's in a fit of laughter. The scene happening next to a loo filled with sick just makes the whole thing bizarre and it nearly makes me start giggling as well. Yeah, 
They're having a moment. It's actually pretty nice. I try to stifle it though as I smack him on the I'm shoulder. Not making a face, Luke. Stop laughing. Shut up. <laughs> when he would not stop laughing, I let myself go as the laughter bubbles from my own throat, and I forget whatever ill feelings plague me. We are just husband and wife laughing together, funny face, with little things in life. I let myself go because I know that these moments will not last forever. But if I just know the terrible things that are to come to us, I would have wished with everything I have, I have then and there that the laughter stayed. Yo, so this means they're telling the story backwards. I didn't even notice that. Like, backwards, backwards. Come on now. Like, I know they've been telling it back, like, all over the place already. Because, like, obviously, like I showed, this is Isabella's point of view. So we're already telling it in two different, like, ways. But you see it entirely differently from someone else's eyes. And I like that. See, like, look. Oh, we're getting the rest of the pages. Look, that's Happy and Verse. This is also when we went to go see the film. But you're seeing like a lot of different stuff at the same time, and I'm liking that a lot more. I'm gonna make this episode probably a little bit longer, not too much longer though. Um, but I like that because now it's like instead of telling the story forward, they're telling the story in a lot of different POVs. Because Isabella, I don't think they ever told it from the uh, without it being first person. And telling us about the, the whole present tense. Whereas she right then just broke that and went past tense. She was like, yeah, I wish these moments would last. And then she said, if I knew what befalled of us after this, I would have just I would have just wished just for this to stay. Up higher, come on now. This place is bustling with movers carrying fun, uh, furnishings here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from our penthouse. Luke watches them like a hawk, making sure nothing is handled carelessly or gets Careful stolen. Now. I get that. I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one of a kind commissioned paintings. I get Each it though. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you lot make. No, honestly, that's that that's like truth in some ways though. That's Luke, just terrifying. Do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? That's actually a good question. Pantry buttercup. Careful, that's a ma no, no, you there, put that down. You do not manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. I can see the aspirate, the exasperate, exasperation, and I have to send the foreman an apologetic glance. Even Johannes rolls his eyes as he goes over. Considering Luke is always like this during a project, Johannes and I have gotten used to it. Poor Marianne, on the other hand, looks a bit stressed at seeing the gigantic mess before quickly getting going back to work and getting going. Everything just has to be perfect, exactly the way he wants it. One little thing out of place, the the blah, blah, one little thing that didn't fit the image, he clearly gets chucked in his head and Luke gets been out of shape. I'm like that, except I'm not, I don't worry about it too much. I used to, a little bit. I'm a perfectionist, and I have an image in my head of how I want things, but I'm not that bad. I can be, but I'm not. Sweetie, why don't we go and sort your suits upstairs? If anything, when you're not like that, you end up like sort of letting things fall as fall as they may. Um, you end up with actually a really nice thing. Let your Hans and Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. We have this, Mrs. Wright. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel bursts. <laughs> the stains are so troublesome to clean. And how would you know that? So no, probably like actually, yeah. No, I mean, nose, nosebleeds, I guess. Taking him by the hand, I lead him upstairs into our bedroom. You guys, you guys sure you don't live in a castle? This is, this is like a royalty castle bed. This place has been arranged first so that we can get some rest, no matter what state the rest of the mansion is in. I'm definitely glad I can just lie down on a soft, comfy bed after what has been what has been a busy morning. Watching Luke act like this is that as blah, blah, like his life depended on getting this move done it is tiring all on its own and to think that I have a whole day of this ahead of me I feel the dip the di uh, the bed dip beside me as Luke sits down the side I can't wait for this to be over I feel that I don't know it's fun seeing you all fired up here at home and not at work you know you know I can't always be home Hana I have a company to run unless you've forgotten I haven't forgotten you're the one who insists on being there to make sure each and every little thing is under control. I just... I just really miss you sometimes, and I wish you were at home more often. 
Why, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loopy and I'll start bringing cats home. At least she's like cats. And soon enough, one day you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things would shred up your precious furniture. <laughs> you don't even like cats. True, true. Dogs are infinitely superior, of course. I, I have a problem with this. I have a problem. I love all animals, but I have a problem with that. Dogs are nice, okay? I won't, I won't, I won't disagree with you there. But I like cats more, so yeah. There's that. I, I like cats more. Because at least a cat can, like, get food. I, I like independent people. Same thing applies to animals. A cat, if you have an outside cat, a cat can get its own goddamn food. You go on vacation, even though I would probably still feed the fucking cat. You get a point. A cat can live off in the wild by itself without a problem, without a hitch. You have a dog outside, it will not live off by itself without a hitch. The independency matters to me. So I like cats more than dogs. I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. But what about the wet dog smell? The mess? I'm not cleaning up after a mutt, no matter how cute. If you think about it, a cat would be better. Sit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always that we can just lie down and talk about these sorts of things. The joke around is if we're teenagers again, with very little problem in a way of responsibility and roles. To hear his genuine, honest to good goodness laughter is a rarity. This is just a second, this is just a second time as of late. I want you to know, I can already tell this is gonna end badly. It's gonna be a sweet moment. These two might even have what we like to call, um, in the horror business, um, a Jason moment. Where they both end up having like sex and we're gonna see the killer. Well, in this case, the girl, she's gonna be standing next to them in the bed or something, or like their head's gonna swap out. One of them's gonna see her or see the other as her or they're gonna look at the fucking wind like look out the door they're gonna see her standing there watching them look at the mirror or some shit and they're gonna be like oh, what was that or one of them in particular is going to see that most likely her because he hasn't said anything even though they both seen the letter and i can only see see it as a signs of good things to come good points i guess we could just have kids that is if you prefer dealing with soil nappies and sick as opposed to dead birds mice and little boxes that's one way to put it I've already told Marianne about turning the second bedroom into a children's room. I guess sometimes I don't know when I'm crossing a line. You can tell by his facial facial expression. I didn't say that I'm a good comedian, did I? Not this again. What? I... I wasn't being serious. It's not something you take the piss out of. Damn. Having a kid is a big responsibility, Hannah. Yes, I know. That's just, I would be carrying the bitch for nine months, motherfucker. <laughs> Why you, on the other hand, would be at your company for nine months straight. We've talked about this, haven't we? We, I'm not ready to be a parent. I'd probably end up killing the little brat by the week's end. I would, see, I would do both. Be honest with you, I would do both. I'd be like, you'll be a great father, and I also apologize for bringing it up, okay? In honesty, though, I'd rather be supportive than, than I mean, they're both supportive. I, I'm a go, you'll be a great father. Carly likes you well enough. The mention of our little god uh, goddaughter places a conflicted look on his face. Sometimes it is cute when he denies having a soft spot for the little girl, but then sometimes it's sad and makes me wonder what happened to make him think so poorly of himself in this yes, regard. Well, it's Kylie. The tyke likes everybody and, on the off chance she doesn't, likes them well enough as long as they buy her sweets. And sure, that kid is great. But if I get tired of her, I can ship her back to her father at the end of the day. <laughs> ship. Ship. He said it's like a product. Having kids of our own will be a whole different monster entirely. I've never heard him talk about his father in any anything but a business context. I recall Damien Wright kept hearing uh, hearing about him from, uh, from my own father even before I met Luke. 
The business world praised them for running a tight ship, and all until one mistake led to a great loss for the Enterprise. It was then that news of Luke Wright, Prodigy's son and successor to the old man, started to show up, and he aided in its recovery and growth up to the Great Recession. Until, until the Great Recession. I'm getting a bit off track. Regardless, I've never heard him talk about his father like one would talk about family. I think you'll be a great father. There is a smile, no matter how half-hearted it may be. I do really think that. He might not be good, honest man. <laughs> a part of me knows that, I, though I try to say it. <laughs> but I know Luke well enough that he will be a better father than either Damien Wright or Henry Evans. I love my father. But he never had the time. If there's any consolation, I think you'd be a decent mother. On the other hand, I've never heard of this mother. A silence settles, both comfortable and uncomfortable. There is familiarity in each other's company despite the awkwardness that had transpired. I mean, in all honesty, when you're with someone you like, there's a level, and it's different for everyone, there's a level, a bar, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, of awkwardness that is normal or acceptable. And, you know, it's actually, like, enjoyable. En enjoyable? Is that the fuck I just said? Enjoyable. Or, like, cute or stuff like that, you know? There's a there's a level of where that is. It's not until it reaches, like, a point of, like, oh, this is awkward. What the fuck is going on? Someone say something. Like, there's differences. Differences are masked down without anybody else no uh, looking. We are both together and alone in this quiet... What a crash from downstairs. Startles us both out of our rever reverie. Luke's get out and lets out a heavy sigh before coming up with his feet, straightening his jacket. I'll have to attend to that then. Be good, darling. You, she's, Jesus. And watch out for your blood pressure. He gives a he gives me a kiss on the cheek before leaving while I lay there in a daze. Alone as per usual. And I'ma end it off here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say it now. As soon as we come back to this. I actually did this for longer, by the way. Uh, as soon as we come back to this, she's most likely gonna see the thing again, and she might scream or something, most likely. But she's gonna she's gonna meet the girl for the first time, most likely now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what her reaction is, or if she actually does. You know, I'm just my my horror senses are tingling and saying that she's gonna meet him, uh, meet her. My bad. Anyways, I'm ending off today's episode here. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed sort of a peaceful episode explaining, I guess, Marianne where they are and everything like that. And, in their relationship and the things that are probably foretold foretell in the future with a little bit of foreshadowing that uh marianne did so if you guys did enjoy this video click that like button if you guys are new to the channel click that subscribe button if you don't mean another one of my videos if you guys wish to be notified when i upload click that notification bell so you guys be notified in email and on youtube when i upload and then I'll, hopefully y'all have a great day and i will catch you homies next low time Bye.